I want to run through some near death experiences and get you to recall the moments. The first one being uh, the second dive when you were 19 years old. Oh wow, you really did went deep on research. My second dive out of the course, I had a new dry suit. I didn't even really understand how to use a dry suit. It's different than diving in a wetsuit. Um, I'm 19 years old. I'm diving off of Vancouver Island, British Columbia, just collecting crabs for dinner because I had no money. I was living off the ocean and my buddy and I, and I had a much bigger tank than he did and he was just better on air than I was. I didn't understand that at the time. And we're just swimming along and all of a sudden, I'm out of air. And I'm like, how can I be out of air? He's not out of air. So I'm sitting there burning up valuable time processing that I've just run out of air and I'm 40 feet deep and I have way too much lead weight on because I'm pushing along the bottom digging up these crab. And so I reach up and I grab them and, and we start to share our air. We're going up to the surface and I keep trying to add air to my suit, but I have no more air. You know, just stupid stuff. And, and we start sharing back and forth, but I'm starting to hog his air now because I'm kicking so hard to go up because I have no air to put into my suit or my BCD. And we start kicking up all the sediment. All of a sudden he loses me, he lets me go. I sink back to the bottom now and I'm tired and he's gone up to the surface and I'm back on the bottom and I'm like, oh, you know, but I've just done all my training and I know that you have to dump your weight belt, no problem. I go to dump it, all I'm grabbing are lead bricks. All my belt has spun around on my suit and the belt buckles underneath my tank. And as I'm feeling this, I'm starting to black out. I'm just, I feel myself going down. I'm just like, and it was not that scary at that point. It's sort of almost peaceful, but I just, I remember, remember thinking, oh, my buckles under my tank and just frantically, just sort of, not frantically, but just grabbing. And all of a sudden it was my buddy on the surface and he shook me, he's like, dude. And I sort of went down on the way up. I blacked out and just that close. To, to hit the surface and him shake me and I'm like, you know, and, and like to have not held my breath and popped a lung, to have not, you know, all these things that could have gone wrong on the way up and could have drowned and this, that was just like, wow. So you don't think I don't check my gauge every 10 seconds on a dive. You feel really lucky to, to, to be able to learn from those moments. Chasing the walrus in Greenland and your regulator freezing. So diving with walrus is like diving with hippos. It's just, nobody does it, it's stupid, you're gonna get killed if you do it. And it's one of those, as you're going down, chasing walrus, and in this case, really bad visibility. Um, we were very unlucky with a big algae bloom, the, the water was terrible, uh, the viz. And chasing this animal that's got a really notorious for having a bad temper, for I've had them attack me before, I've had them put their tusks through my boat, I've had them rip open the floor of my zodiac before, and now here we are getting in the water with them to try and reveal their world you know, to the rest of the world and how they eat clams and how they, they feed. And, and it's just, it was fascinating. I was, you know, you're excited to do it, but the whole time you're like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die if I do this, I'm not gonna come back from this. And all of a sudden, finally, this, this sea ice came into this bay where the viz was bad, and just the cooling effect of the water and all this ice there, it killed the algae bloom that was going on, all that photosynthesis and the water cleared up and, and the walrus were in there feeding and I jumped in the water one day and I'm down deep. I went deeper to get to, into the clear water and I'm at 100 feet deep and I'm chasing these two big bull walrus and I'm swimming as hard as I can and I'm just out of breath. I'm just like burning up and I'm alone and I've and got my big housing. I'm, I can see these two walrus in front of me and in my mind, I'm like, I'm gonna fail this story for National Geographic. This will be the first, I'm not thinking I'm gonna die or this is dangerous, I'm thinking I'm gonna fail. And, and that's a dangerous place to be. And I all of a sudden, no air. And at that point, when I'm already that deprived of, of oxygen, I'm just, I'm, I'm done, you know. I, but I, if you dump your weight belt, which is what you would do, and you'd probably survive if it had been in the open water, but if you dump your weight belt under ice, you get stuck underneath the ice. You, you know, you're gonna be 40 pounds too buoyant at the surface. So you can't dump your weight belt. And now I just start, going for the surface. You know, I can't add any air to my thing. I'm already a little bit heavy. I just start kicking for the surface and I'm like, so I've always been curious how I'm gonna die. And I'm like, okay, I got it. I, now I know. And as I'm going up, I'm getting, you know, lightheaded and just <laughs> gave me this, gave me the air again. So it's just so funny just mentally to go down that path of, I know how I'm gonna die. And then it just, and I sent the regs out after that, everything to get serviced and what they figure uh, was that um, ice, there was so much moisture, the way we were filling our tanks in Greenland and up very in, in the evening when it was very humid that it was just building up moisture in the tank and the ice formed inside the tank and blocked it and so lucky that it formed, blocked it and then released again. Uh, but that was, that was a close one. I just had another one in Antarctica where I was diving under an iceberg, again, 29 degree Fahrenheit water and 
and just filming and it's all going great. And all of a sudden I got this free flow from this new regulator that from Sherwood that they were asking me to test this new model. The interstatic pressure of that reg was so amped up, I should have checked it again. But it's just blowing cold air into my mouth. And by the time I got to the surface, no big deal. Got up, you know, free flow. I know how to deal with that. Handed my camera up. I pulled that rag out of my mouth and like, like liquid nitrogen, like this kind of steam came out of my mouth. And I realized I couldn't feel my tongue. I couldn't feel any of my teeth. I'd frozen the entire inside of my mouth. And from there I had, um, I was sick for almost a year just with the, with the amount of damage I did to my lungs from that. Just breathing that cold, cold air under high pressure on a dive. Set the scene and explain what happens when you were filming breeding elephant seals. Yeah, another one where elephant seals are again like hippos. They just, they've got really bad tempers and nobody had filmed breeding elephant seals underwater in Antarctica. And it's one animal that will swim up to a zodiac with 10 guests in it, bite down on that boat and fling people into the water. That's happened down there. Um, they have wicked tempers and during the breeding season you've got an 8,000 pound animal. That's an animal that's 18 to 20 feet long. It weighs as much as an F-350 pickup truck and he's got teeth that are five inches long and he's got a bad personality. And, and generally they're pretty nice but they're, they're um, during the breeding season they're either going to kill you or breed you. And I thought I still need to get an underwater picture of a big adult male elephant seal and I swam. So all, all that considered you're like all that considered I'm it. like finally we had clear viz I could see an elephant seal in the water the mistake I made is I didn't realize that it was the dominant breeding bull that he was going to kill and attack any other male elephant seal or any other threat that came near his harem of 300 females that he was breeding we saw other males drown and kill females in the surf zone breeding them in the surf because they're, and these are 1500 pound females that they're drowning by, but just getting on top of them and trying to breed them. They're so horned up to pass on their genetics um, that, you know, I, all that factored, I still jumped in the water and I swam up to this big bull and I'm alone. My assistant is down the beach and I'm swimming up to this bull and right away he sees me and I, I saw a boulder. I was nervous. My heart's pounding. I'm like, you know, again, this is a bad idea. If you do this, you're going to die, but I'm going to ignore that because I've survived every other time. I went up behind a big boulder. It's only four feet deep, and this boulder's almost to the surface, so I'm, I'm with this boulder hiding behind it, and he sees me. His eyes are this big, and he shoots straight over to me. And here comes this 18-foot-long, 8,000-pound dominant breeding elephant seal, and I'm just like, oh, shit. And as he came so fast, he came right around the rock. I now have nothing between us and he rears up and I'm down in four feet of water on my back and he's coming up on top of me and his head's probably, you know, three, over three feet wide and he lunges at me in this head and I'm looking in his mouth and as he tries to bite down on me, all I can do is shove my dome inside his mouth and I can see his big teeth and he's trying to bite me, he's trying to crush me and every time he tried to lunge on top of me, all I could do to push off him was to get my dome in his mouth and push off him and push off him. So I kept pushing away from him as he's trying to bite me and crush me. And then I started to get closer to the shore. Now I'm in three feet of water. I tried to stand up so I could, you know, I got flip fins on. I can't stop to do anything. And every time he hit me, I was just like the force of hit when him hit was just the bang. And, and I got, now I stand up. And as I stood up, he saw that as a challenge. He reared up to 10 feet high and just threw himself at me. And I just got out of the way of that. And I started, you know, my story, I was like, ah! I was screaming like boom take another hit from him finally my my guy I'm working with saw I was in trouble and he came running down the beach and he distracted he just came out and was waving at it. it turned on him for a second and I crawled out of the beach and just again bad decision my fault not not the fault of the elephant seal just I made a stupid decision and it almost cost me but I got in the water with another breeding bull after that and I got his picture so it was good